Hello, Bobcats. Mr. Flato here. Welcome back to another fantastic week at the Helena Middle School. Um, hope you guys had a great weekend and are ready to rock and roll it here. Uh, another week in March. Weather's getting nice. We got to push through. We got to finish. Um, today I'm doing a. I'm excited about this lesson. I'm sharing one of my favorite poems with you. It's called The Man in the Glass, and um, and we're going to be talking about one of the four universals that we haven't. I haven't covered much on, which is responsibility. Um, so I hope you guys like this Bob lesson. Um, we got two weeks left. We got to. We got to get through, be here every day until spring break. Um, I know the weather's getting nice, but we have got to finish this fall. Um, so without further ado, here comes Bob Lesson 24, The Man in the Glass. And oh, March Madness has began. Go Beeves. All right, Bobcats, we are on to Bob Lesson number 24. And like I told you in the intro, this Bob Lesson is going to be geared around an awesome poem called The Man in the Glass. But first, you folks know the drill. Let's be our best this week at HMS. Let's be safe. Let's be responsible. Let's be respectful. And let's be a learner. All right. I hope you guys can see this. Um, this is a poem by Mr. Peter Dale Wimbro Sr. And it is called The Man in the Glass. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this poem to you. And then we're going to break it down paragraph by paragraph. Um, because it is kind of metaphor-based. And there are some words, and it's kind of with most poems, there's, there's some deep thinking involved here. So, here we go, the man in the glass. When you get what you want in your struggle for self, and the world makes you king for a day, just go to the mirror and look at yourself and see what that man has to say. For it isn't your father or mother or wife whose judgment upon you must pass. The fellow whose verdict counts most in your life is the one staring back from the glass. He's the fellow to please, never mind all the rest, for he's with you, clear to the end. And you've passed your most difficult, dangerous test if the man in the glass is your friend. You may fool the whole world down the pathway of years and get pats on the back as you pass, but your final reward will be heartache and tears if you've cheated the man in the glass. All right, I hope you guys like that poem, and we're going to break it down now, uh, piece by piece, page by page, and talk a little bit more in depth about what this poem is trying to say and how it's applicable, how you can apply it to your guys' life. So this poem starts out and says, when you get what you want in your struggle for self, and I want to go back to last week's Bob lesson where I talked about um, my good friend, well, not my friend, but Eric Erickson and... Um, Identity versus role confusion and answering that question, who am I, and, and how we all struggle for that in life, and specifically when you're 12 to 19, 20, and, and, and honestly, um, into your 20s and into your 30s, when you're struggling to, to figure out who you are, and when you, when you finally get what you want in your struggle for self, and you figure out who you are, or you accomplish whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. And the world makes you king for a day, and you finally achieve something. You finally get to where you feel like you're going. You have a victory. Um, and maybe you finally um, achieve something that you were trying to achieve. Just go to the mirror and look at yourself and see what that man has to say. Now, this could be man. This could be woman. Um, just for this poem's sake, um, it says man, but this is really saying go look in the mirror and face yourself and ask that person in the mirror what they have to say. So when you get what you want in your struggle for self and the world makes you king for a day, just go to the mirror and look at yourself and see what that man has to say. All right, now we're on to the second page. And the second page reads, For it isn't your father or mother or wife whose judgment upon you must pass. The fellow whose verdict counts most in your life is the one staring back at the glass. So let's look at this first sentence here. And when they say father or mother or wife, I know obviously none of you are married because you're only 11 to 14 years old here at the Helena Middle School. Um, but those words could very easily be interchanged with um, your friends, your cousins, your teachers, your brothers, your sisters, so on and so forth. And I think for this Bob Lesson's sake, and for how it's most applicable to you guys, I would say it's really talking about mother, father, maybe uh, grandma, grandpa, maybe auntie, uncle, um, friends, definitely for sure, and, and probably your teachers, because that's who you come in the most contact with. The fellow whose verdict counts most in your life is the one staring back from the glass. So to put this all together, they're basically saying, the author is basically saying, it isn't any of those other people that you come in contact with on a day-to-day -day basis 
whose judgment you must pass. The verdict that counts most in your life is the person staring back at the glass. And the person staring back from the glass is obviously you. All right, now we're on to the slide three. And slide three says, he's the fellow to please, never mind all the rest, for he's with you, clear to the end. And you've passed your most difficult, dangerous test if the man in the glass is your friend. Now again, man can be interchanged for man or woman, and he can be exchanged for she's. So in this page he's saying that you are the person that you need to please, not other people. Never mind all those other people. Yes, we need to, to please our mom and dad, and we need to please our friends, and we need to please our teachers. But those people are going to come and go in life, especially friends, especially your teachers. Okay, hopefully family sticks around a little bit longer um, than those other people, your friends and your teachers. Uh, for he's with you clear to the end. You are always going to have you. The person in the glass is always going to have you. And you've passed your most difficult and dangerous test if the man in the glass is your friend. And I, I think this is where the poem gets really good because it talks about being true to yourself and taking responsibility and accountability for yourself. And a lot of times in life we have a decision to, to make. Are we going to make other people happy or are we going to make ourselves happy? And um, I think we need to take care of ourselves first and foremost and do what's best for us always in life. Um, because we can't be helpful to other people if we're not taking care of ourselves. Um, you've passed your most difficult, dangerous test if the man in the glass is your friend. And this goes back to that, that personal accountability piece, but it also goes back to figuring out who we are in life. Um, we need to be able to look ourselves in the mirror and be happy with, with ourselves and the choices we make and the decisions we make. And as we get into this next page, I'm going to explain this a little bit further. All right, and on to the fourth and final slide. You may fool the whole world down the pathway of years and get pats on the back as you pass, but your final reward will be heartache and tears if you've cheated the man in the glass. Let's start with this first sentence. You may fool the whole world down the pathway of years. Um, this is what happens when we're not being real and unapologetically um, authentic to ourselves. That is one of my favorite words I've came up with or phrases I've come up with in the last years. Be unapologetically authentic to who you really are in life. And I know this is a very hard thing for 11 to 14 year olds to do because we're trying to figure out. We don't even know who we are. Getting back to last week's Bob lesson, that answering that question, who am I? And sometimes we do things to fit in or we do things that are popular instead of being true to who we truly are. Um, the other thing I think about when I read this and I think about middle school kids is um, is being true to yourself in terms of of our homework and how honest we are with ourselves and our parents. And um, I talked to a lot of parents that think some of you are doing pretty well in school, and and then power school tells another tells another story because some of you are able to pass stories off on how you're really doing in school or how you're really doing as a friend. Um, I encourage kids all the time to go look in the mirror and ask themselves, am I being the best friend I can be? Am I being the best person that I can be? Am I doing my best in this or that situation in life? Because at the end of the day, we can't control other people. We can only control our own actions and, and our own selves. Uh, you may fool the whole world down the pathway of years and get pats on the back as you pass. Um, but your final reward will be heartache and tears if you've cheated the man in the glass. Because you can't cheat the man in the glass. You can fool other people. And you can tell lies. And you can be dishonest um, with other people. And you can trick other people. But getting back to what I talked about a slide or two ago. Um, you can't fool yourself. You can't look in the mirror and lie to yourself because you know in your heart of hearts what's right and wrong. You know in your heart of hearts how hard you're working in school or how hard you're not working. You know in your own heart of hearts how hard you're working at being a great friend, being a great peer, bringing, being a great teammate, being a great son or daughter, being a great brother or sister. And, and we can fool other people but you can't fool the man in the glass. All right, Bobcats, I am back. I don't know if I've ever done this before, uh, but I'm super fired up about this awesome poem and this Bob lesson about responsibility. Um, so I wanted to challenge you. 
and not only students, staff members as well, administrators as well, counselors as well, um, everybody that's involved in the school as well. Let's take some time this week and spend some time with the man in the glass. Let's, let's spend the time doing some self-reflection, looking in the mirror and asking ourselves, am I being the best student that I can be? Am I being the best teacher, counselor, administrator, uh, whatever it is that I can be? Um, am I being the best friend that I can be? Am I being the best son or daughter I can be? Um, brother or sister that I can be? Um, am I working hard enough Am I working as hard as I can or am I slacking some days? Um, do I need to work harder? Am I cutting corners? Do I need to stop cutting corners? Um, am I being honest with my parents in terms of my schoolwork or am I being honest with my friends? Um, because at the end of the day you can't fool the man in the glass and the man in the glass is the only person that's ever going to be there day in day out with you from the beginning to the end and I think being accountable to yourself and that gets back to that respect piece having respect for yourself means that you do your best every day and you give yourself the best opportunities you can every day uh, for a bright future and you don't shortchange yourself and any decision that you make that is shortchanging your future um, isn't respecting yourself um, so, so spend some time doing some self-reflection this week, and, and, and I recommend doing it all the time. It's something that I'm trying to get better at, um, reflecting, uh, am I doing well enough as a counselor or as a basketball official or as a friend or a, or a son or, or what have you? Um, it's really easy to be dishonest and to tell lies and to put things off onto other people. Um, one of my biggest things is we all make mistakes and I'm doing a, a Bob lesson coming up here with Miss Vetabadi's advisor I haven't forgot about you guys we're gonna do it sometime this month um, when you make a mistake take accountability for it you know the best thing to do in life is is admit yes I made a mistake learn from it and move on and that's part of that responsibility um, piece that's part of um, being accountable to the man in the glass so hope you guys like this Bob lesson I had a great time doing it um, and we're going to finish up here with the Jelly Bean Question of the Week winners. All right, and our quote of the week comes from uh, Miss Anne Frank. Anne Frank was a, a Jewish Holocaust survivor, and she was an author and, and wrote some, some books and some different documents um, after she got out of the concentration camp and her quote was the final forming of a person's character lies in their own hands and that's what the man in the glass is about that's what personal responsibility is about um, it's not anybody else's fault what happens to us in life um, but our own we control our own destiny and we control our own outcomes all right, Jelly Bean Question of the Week winners. Last week's question was, this five-letter word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it. Many of you got this, and the word was short. Um, get it short, shorter. Um, I hope you guys like that one. Um, and a special shout-out to my man, Hollywood, Kale. Um, he decorated the Bob box. Many of you ask where these questions go, so I thought I would take a picture. So you come in the counseling department here, and there's a Bob box with Bob right there. Um, sitting right there. Submit your answer before Friday um, every week if you'd like a chance to win Jelly Bean. Speaking of Jelly Bean, Question of the Week winners. Charles Barnett, Laurel Whitlatch, Isaac Nearing, Wyatt Robertson, and Teague Eblem. Um, come and see me sometime before school, after school this week. Bring a friend. Rumor on the street is they get Jelly Beans too. This next Jelly Bean Question of the Week winner, or excuse me, Question of the week riddle is what is the next number in the sequence? So it goes 1, 11, 21, uh, 1211, uh, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1. If you think you know, get your answer in and get it submitted. All right, folks, let's make it a great week at the Helena Middle School.